Kenneth Dale Holtzman, who pitched his best game of the series in the playoffs against Baltimore last Tuesday. Two to one victory, 11 innings, allowing just three hits, walked only one. He had tremendous stuff and had his control. He struck out seven in that game. The only run he allowed was a home run by Earl Williams. He had 10 days rest before that game, and he said he needed the rest. We'll take a look at him in slow motion so you can study the motion. Tony? Against Baltimore, he threw primarily fastballs, I guess, of about 110 or 15 pitches he threw. He threw just eight breaking pitches. I think it's going to be a surprise for this Mets team to see a different Kenny Holtzman than he remember when he pitched for the Chicago Cubs. He's had trouble with the New York Mets. His lifetime record while he was in the National League with the Cubs, four wins, nine losses against the Mets. And he didn't beat them the last two years he was in the National League. Mays at first, two down. Willie stole only one base this year. There's a bounding ball sharply to the box. Holtzman throws him out in the side retire. No runs, one hit, no errors, one left. The first half inning gone, it's 0-0. Today the uh, hitters are looking into a shirt sleeve crowd as a background. This is our handheld camera, by the way. That's the background out there in the bleachers. The ball comes out of that background. Curve is strike three, and Holtzman sails through the second. At the end of an inning and a half, 0-0. Zero, zero. The grass in the outfield at this ballpark is very thick, and there has not been a football game played on it to tear it up in about a month. So the ball will roll fairly slowly going out there, and that could help a runner also. Al Davis of the Oakland Raiders thinks he may never get back in here again. There's a bounding ball to Bando at third. He'll go to first. Wide throw in time. Bando is usually very accurate, but he nearly threw that one away. No runs, no hits. One man left. Two and a half gone. Zero, zero. And you can spot the outfield set up again. Look at Jackson. He's well over in right center. And a Lou. Crowding the right field line, a hole in left center, and Rudy straight away in left. That's the way they've been playing most of these Met right handed batters. Struck him out through the fastball right by. One run, two hits, two left. The end of three and a half. It is two to one Oakland. Mays hits a high fly ball to right fielder Jesus Salou. The sides retire. No runs for the Mets. One hit, no error. They left one. We're halfway through, and it's Oakland 2, New York 1. There's Mary Barry, one of the Oakland A's ball girls, and after the fifth inning here of all ball games, both she and Debbie Sevier, the other girl, will take refreshments out to the umpires, and that having been done, we're ready for baseball. Here's Debbie Sevier. Raleigh Fingers, the new pitcher, throws a big breaking slider. Holtzman in five innings gave up one run on four hits. He walked three and struck out two. Raleigh Fingers, one of the top relief pitchers in baseball. This year won seven and lost eight, but had 22 saves for the A's with a very fine earned run average of 1.92, and he's facing Cleon Jones with a count one and one. He's extremely rough on right handers with a sidearm slider, sidearm sinking fastball. Struck him out with a blazer on the inside. No runs and a hit. Two left on the score in the middle of the sixth inning. Oakland two, New York one. Like that one. A line drive to Burt Cavanaer as he picked it right off his shoe tops. In the seventh inning, the Mets don't score, leaving it Oakland two, New York one. It would be a different situation against some clubs in the late innings of a two to one game. Fly ball off first. Out in no man's land. Dick Green is after it. So is tennis. Tennis picks it off right in front of Green's head. Very fine play by Gene Tennis, who's converted to become an outstanding first baseman this year. Ordinarily, this would be the second baseman's ball. Green coming over as quickly as he could, but with a right-handed hitter, he had to go a little bit farther. I don't think he could have gotten it had tennis not. You saw Dick Williams move to the home plate umpire. Did he? Was he announced? Is he in the game? Stop. Yes. He's brought in Daryl Knowles. And now Yogi Berra removes Staub and is going to go with a right-handed pinch hitter, Jim Beecham. Daryl Knowles has never pitched in a World Series game. Last year, right before the American League Championship Playoff Series, Daryl, while batting, hit a ball to left field, and as he watched it fall in to left field, he started running to first base and fell down and broke his thumb on his pitching hand.
Little looper. Dick Crane sensational play. Can't get it back to first, but what a well-timed jump that turned out to be. I think after he caught the ball, he wanted to throw, but he was off balance, and he was afraid to throw it away. Then he made another shot at first. Watch him. Green has been very steady today. He's a short man, but he had perfect timing on that. He handled the double play ball in the seventh. Off the bat of Garrett, that was a wicked shot to him. Charlie Finley, the owner of the A's, the lone, the sole, the sole owner of the team now, knows his club is one out away from capturing game one. Tony Kubek is on the field. He'll be interviewing one of the players after the game. Fly ball right field. This could be it. Reggie Jackson coming in. He's there. He's got it. And the A's win the first game of the 1973 World Series, setting off the Finley Fireworks. All right, with me with the manager of the Oakland A's, though still the world's champion, winner of this first ball game, being congratulated by Charlie Finley. Charlie, congratulations. You got another one under your belt. Good to see you looking so good. Thank you very much. You got a good man here, don't you? Dick, you had to make a decision in this ball game. You didn't have many decisions like it all year long. A two-to-one ball game, Holtzman, no designated hitter in the World Series. You took him out. Well, uh, Ken hit the double and had to run hard and slide hard in the second. And then uh, the ball that got through me on, uh, on the next hitter, he had to run real hard all the way uh, home. And, uh, of course, we got another run after Campy uh, steals second and Rudy gets a base hit, but it took, uh, took a little steam out of him. He went 11 innings uh, four days ago. He only had three days rest. And prior to that, uh, he had missed, we let him bypass one turn because he had uh, thrown more innings this year, Tony, than he had all year uh, uh, in his previous uh, career in one year. So he was a little uh, uh, tired. Uh, he got the victory, uh, a well-deserved victory for him, a great relief job by Raleigh Fingers and Darrell Knowles. So uh, we're just quite pleased to get off on the right foot. You know, it's difficult from up where we are, Dick, being so far away from home play, but it did not appear, even though it was a low-scoring ball game, that the p pitchers were particularly sharp until McGraw came in, then Raleigh seemed to have a good inning. Well, I'll tell you, uh, Mr. Matlack, uh, even though he got the loss on it, both runs were unearned, he's very, very tough. I was proud of all three of my pitchers. Mr. McGraw, I have caught his act before. Uh, I think there's going to be uh, a, a low-scoring series. Uh, I'd be surprised if it wasn't. I think games will be like this, and anything can happen. We'll probably be back here next Sunday also.